Uh, I'm going to make a start on make on the, the the pivot pins, this angle plate. Um, traditionally, I've been using these off eBay inserts. Um, these are a TNMG. Uh, look, they're all right. I do use a WNMG as well, but I've I'm getting a bit tired of these not lasting, so. I've been in touch with Live Tools and we've got a couple of inserts I want to try and the price is a lot different but if I'm going to get three times as long as I have an insert it's worth buying a decent brand. So this is a Palpit WNMG, it's got a deeper chip breaker, um, apparently it's meant to be the duck's nuts so I'm going to give it a crack. And see how we go. Um, got nothing to lose, and yeah, I don't mind spending money if I'm going to get a bit of life out of it. Um, these TNMGs and the WNMGs I use are these. Look, they're not bad, but they just don't seem to hold up. As soon as you start doing a fair bit of heavy cutting, now they just wear the edge real quick. So. I'm going to give this, I've got a, a T and GG, I think it is, insert. I want to give a try, a WNMG. And there's another tool and tool holder I'll show a bit later on when I use it. So, give this one a crack. Interested there's the numbers of it. It's a Palpit insert, Palpit brand. speeds and feeds a little bit so it's sort of finish we can produce fifty power depth of cut So it's got to come down to half inch. So I'll put another 50 thou on and increase the feed rate a little bit. There we go, breaking a tip. As you can see, then we're starting to break the chips. So I'll put another 50 thou cut on and increase the feed rate by. Touch. That was fifty thousand depth of cut, was breaking a chip. But I might back it, put a sixty thousand depth of cut on and take it back a notch. So it was breaking the chip then, 60 thou depth of cut. So we've got 105 thou to come off. That's bloody hot. But I don't want, I should let this cool down because um, it's got to be a pretty pretty um, neat fit into the hole of the, um, the pivots on this angle plate. That insert's quite, it was a bloody nice finish. Why this? I just want to get this down here to an um, inch and a half. So I've got 200 and I think it's 270 odd thou to come off that. Yeah, 275 thou to come off it.
This is a uh, TNGG insert. Another one I've got to see how I go with it. Um, made by Union Materials. They were formerly another company. I can't remember what the name was. But this is apparently meant to perform a much much like high speed steel. It's got a hone the ground edge. So I've got five thou to remove off this this pin. It's going to be a bulb, obviously. Um, so it's a good opportunity to give this a go if it acts like high speed steel. I purposely left five thou on to give this a go. I'm not worried about as long as it's smooth or close to smooth. I just want to see how it's going to perform. I'm going to put two and a half thou on the dial. Feels smooth. Okay, we'll put a fraction more on. I'm going to slow the feed rate down considerably. Well, definitely removed the <laughs> bare minimum off. We only removed a thou. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to put a half 20 national fine on this bolt. I think that tip needs changing. I didn't realise that the insert was stuffed. I cut a thread on a steering column for a tractor. For dad the other day I had to chase the thread up and um, had a big mushroom on the end of the thing and I didn't it cut that fine. You know it is what it is. I'll leave it at that. It'll work. needs two flats putting on here now which that'll leave an inch a one inch piece to contact with the groove I'm going to put in the in the ears so it'll stop it rotating up all right so we've got the ears well the two ears that are going to go on the top plate the one that actually pivots are going to have these in there and these will have a flat milled on each side which will bring the width of this down to one inch so I want a one inch groove in line with the center of this hole so these will lock in and they won't they won't rotate so there's only yeah you're not you haven't got to you haven't got to use two spanners to do it up so these actually lock into yeah you only need one spanner to the adjustments so I'm going to put the slot in the ear first in this bracket first before I then if I do overshoot it it's not going to be sloppy I can make the um, machine this to suit be easier to machine this to suit than the machine the base that the yeah that piece so I've got a Three quarter two flute end mill. Um, gonna run through it's gonna be 200 thou deep, and I've got to shift 125 thou each side of center, and that'll give me well, 
close to one inch and I can make these to suit. That was a lot of talking for bugger all really, wasn't it? Get this cleaned up and I'll give you a look. Okay, I've just give that a bit of a tidy up. See how close to the inch we got. Looks like I've overshot it by a thou. I don't know. Oh yeah, overshot it by a thou. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's nothing crucial, I just try and hit the numbers. I'll do the second one now, get it done, um, and these can have about three holes put in the end of them, but before I'll do that I'll make the mounting, the actual top plate I think, so I'll get the next one done. Okay, we've got the, um, the pivot bolt, pin, whatever you want to call it, in a square collar block, I've got to mill two flats on it to fit into here so there's about a quarter of an inch take off each side off two sides and then hopefully that'll fit just as neat as a pin with a bit of luck I just cleaned it up with a file. She's in. And off camera, I've machined up a couple of thick washers. Put on the right side. Don't And I can see I've already done this other side as well. So now it's um, built the top piece on. Now I am thinking down the track a little bit, I may have to trim this plate off. Put these set of holes back here so I can get a 45 on this, like facing forward. 
So I think it's going to, the top plate's going to clash too hard on here and I won't quite get 45. So we've made a start on the top plate. I just got it in the shape of just taking all the rust and crap off it. And I'll put it in the Cincinnati and run the fly cutter across it. Since I want a fly cutter finish. Shape is doing what it does best, getting rid of the crap. Well, honestly, that's probably a good enough finish for the top of this angle plate, but no, I think I still will put the um, fly cutter over it. But that handled, that was a 40 thou depth of cut, 10 thou step over, no dramas at all. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is I've cleaned up these two long faces just by side milling them. This front face here has already been done on the shaper, but I'm going to run over that again. I ran an indicator up, up off the bottom of the um, the support arm and indicated this edge in and got this, so uh, it's yeah, this edge is now square to this edge, which is going to be cut. Flip it around, do the same, recut this front face. Overall dimensions of this plate are not really important. Um, so once this is all squared up, then I can work out my offsets for the three mounting bolts on each side for the pivot and then I can take it all back off again and then fly cut the top do the uh, the slots in it probably three lots of slots for mounting slots at this stage still we have to work that part out completely but yeah we'll get this done I just want to make note it's been a couple of weeks since I changed this coolant out to this 50-30 Hangstifers. Now, I've just done a test on it, and I'll show you guys. There we go. So it's still sitting where I initially mixed it up. It hasn't lost any of its condition. Where before, I'd notice after a couple of weeks, the pure white stuff had started to discolour. Um, this is still the same as the day I put it in. So to me that is a bloody good thing. Have a look around the back, see if that's all cleaned up, will you? Tell me if it's good enough. Yeah, it's got oil on it. Take another coat, another another cut. Do you reckon? I don't know. I'll do, I'll do a do a fine cut, cut the thou off. It'll put a better finish on it. Nothing wrong with that finish, I'll be happy with that every day of the week. I can flip it around now and just recut this front face.
almost finished that. Definitely good enough for this job. I've got to make up a little break that goes down here where the drain goes through to stop this swarf coming down in the hole. Because every now and again I've got to put the table, take the uh, handles and everything off, push the table right out to clean the, the belly out in there, in the knee. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass to do. Job for one day. Right, uh, so here comes the sketchy setup. Fly cutter out to its nth degree, still holding by two set screws, which it does not cover the whole width. Is a just a a whisker on each side. I'm just going to have a chamfer put around it, which that takes care of that. That's what I've done on the other plate as well. Now I know it's probably not real safe running a fly cutter like this, but why not? I've done the last one, should do this one. So we'll see how it performs. So I quickly ran around the four edges with a countersinking bit just to put a chamfer on because the fly cutter just wouldn't quite touch it. With this chamfer on here now, you'll be able to cut side to side and it won't interfere. So when the fly cutter's coming around with the shoulder here, it was causing um, a bit of an issue. So I'm hoping this will solve it. This is what I've done last time and it worked. So I, I forgot to do it off the bat this morning. So hopefully I can achieve a nice finish. finish here. We pick it up in the camera but there is a bit of a shimmer in this edge here. But apart from that there's, there's another little shimmer over in the corner, in this corner. But apart from that it's pretty pretty good. That last run really uh, must have nailed everything right. <laughs> Look it's it's not a surface finish but like a surface grind to finish but it's, it's only an angle plate. But Trying to get as nice as finished as I can. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I've got top plate mounted up. Um, all trued up along from this. Use this front face with the dial indicator to get that running true. Edge finder. Found the edge. Then I found the centre of the plate. Um, then I offset each side. I've got offset um, 2.6 inches each each side of centre um, and then I've got all my numbers worked out, a pile of crap in the paper, <laughs> I can understand it only just um, what my offsets are for the three holes. So we'll drill and then counterbore the six holes.
three holes done on that side so now I've got to move 2.6 inches from center the other way and repeat this same deal well, I can unbolt this now off the table and go and bolt it onto the bottom of the angle plate and see if it's all going to line up. So if I've done my numbers correct, it should just all bolt up freely. Fingers crossed. And just sort of lined it up with the raw to get a level. Should be close. Um, bring the plate in and have a look, eh? Promising. <laughs> that one lines up. Bit of luck, these will too. Can't complain about that. Let's grab a few more bolts. Spins in easy. It's not bad considering I've done the um, what I call the years, the pivot point pieces in the with the dial indicator on the drill bell drill. These ones are done with the DRO and it all lines up, so I'm pretty impressed about that. Finally, I've got something right. It's pretty cool, huh? She's definitely industrial. Jeez, I can't complain about that. I've got in here, go straight. Got to be over, it's over centered, which is good. But we haven't got 45 that way. Um, which is a bit of a bummer. We've got 45 that way. Um, be nice if I could get 45 either, like either way. If I, this will give me a rough idea. If I zero this to the base. What zero there anyway. So the bench is level. And this is level. Twenty nine point yeah twenty nine degrees. So we'll go over center, see how far over center it goes. So it's going over center back to eighty eight degrees from ninety. So Forty-five and a half. So I just snip them up. That's got some.
I can't make that move. It's my fat gut on it. So it's old and solid. It's a good thing. Well, there we have it together. Now, I want to put this out to you viewers. Um, when I lay this angle plate back, I get to about 32 degrees when it touches on the bottom here. I can shorten this bottom plate so that it'll let this come down a lot further. So cut it off, say here somewhere, in between these two T-slots and put another mounting hole and just pick off pick up off these two T-slots here, off these two, and just cut the rest of this off. Or leave it the way it is, um, and just use a 45 in the opposite direction. It will go, it'll go over 90, to back to about 88 degrees, so it'll go over centre, uh, in this direction. So, another thing I, thought I'd ask is on the top what would you guys do would you just put three slots in it this way or a short slot in here long one there a long one there or would you make it a pallet with a heap of tapped holes I don't know I'm undecided I can't work out what to do so I thought I'd ask you guys just whatever you think chuck it in the comments and um yeah, I'll make a decision then. So I just don't know which way to run. But putting the angle gauge on it, the digital angle box, even though they're not 100% accurate, zero to the bottom of, to the bottom plate, put on the top plate, it's read exactly the same. So everything is a lot, everything's lining up spot on. So I'm really stoked about that. Um, the Cincinnati, I'm thinking, will be the main machine this is going to be used on. Um, to put it on the mill drill, it won't be very hard to put an extra set of holes in the, in the bottom plate to match the T-slots for the mill drill. But I'll do that if I ever need to use it on there. This is sort of the main machine it was built for. Um, it's a hard thing to work out. You know, am I going to put a chuck on this at some stage? You know, a three-jaw chuck or something like that? Or is it just going to be for, you know, bolt? I just, I don't know. So I don't know what way to run with it. So if you guys can throw us a bit of advice, it would be truly appreciated. And, um, and then the next video we'll come up with a decision and, yeah. Whether it's got four slots in it, three slots in it, in the x-axis or the y-axis i don't know we'll work it out or whether it's just going to be just full of tap tiles so let us know what you think and we'll we'll run from there anyway i hope you've enjoyed this project so far because i've had a blast and i'll tell you what it's definitely got, got some weight in it but it looks pretty cool Definitely industrial. And it's solid too, like you can lay on it and it doesn't even move, it's, it holds dead tight. Pretty impressed. <laughs>